The stage is set for a thrilling last quarter on NWS Channel 9. It's the grand final for 1968. The man in white is umpire Murray Ducker. It's Sturt and Port Adelaide. The scores, Sturt, 10 goals, 13-73. Port Adelaide, 6 goals, 6-42. And Sturt have certainly, or certainly appear at this stage to have the game sewn up. However, Port Adelaide not to be outdone, fighting on right to the bitter end. Terry Short and, end, and uh, Russell Ebert get the ball. Port Adelaide in the black shorts going towards the scoreboard end, and this is the final term. Down it goes. Nelson gets it, clears it away for Sturt. High into the air it goes, across towards the eastern side of the ground. Off hands, Port Adelaide going into uh, attack once again through Dennis Erie. Erie defends strongly, drives them into attack. Nelson gets the ball off his boot, but it's Port Adelaide again. High into the air towards centre half forward. Yo! Schwarz was there too. Leal. Leal gets the ball over here towards Freeman. Oh, Freeman appeared to stop one there. And we see Bagshaw once again come through. Must make uh, very highly for the GW Cox best on ground. Bagshaw's kick finds Tilbrook. Tilbrook goes further downfield. Trevor Ops gets back there though, grabs the ball, gets it away here. It goes down to Martin. Martin puts it high into the air, right across goal, and out of bounds it will go. No change in the score. What, what was wrong with popping it over to Chessel in the goal square? Well, I feel Sturt have done this on a couple of occasions today, Noel, and the scoreboard of 10-13 could quite easily have been reversed. The throw in in the left forward pocket sees Clarkson hook it over the back, but through comes Jeffrey Potter, high in the GW Cox calculations for Port Adelaide, and uh, Clark nearly pulled in the mark on the wing for Sturt. Got caught, had the chance to get the kick in, but got caught, and Bruce Nyland plays on now, gets it up towards half-forward line. The bounce of the ball sees Peter Robbs come through, anticipating well. Drives him long towards Freeman and Jarrett. Jarrett leads out in the race for the ball. The hand pass goes in the direction of Bagshaw. This kick back up towards the centre of the ground. Big Bob Clayton there, opposed to Peter Endersby, and heightened strength, cold to tail. Once again, we have the pleasure to present, on behalf of GW Cox, the unicorn watch to the player, judged best on the ground by the panel sitting here this afternoon, broadcasting this game on Channel 9. Comes to ground. Freeman let go with the boot. It was short to Endersby. Endersby, down towards the centre of the ground. Shearman and uh, Spears went high. Schock gets it out to Tilbrook. Tilbrook uses his strength with the hand passes four back to Phil. Oh, Gulp straight into Tilbrook. Back to the centre of the ground. Hicks and Haslam came through for a good mark for Port Adelaide. Haslam goes for a short one and finds Peter Opst. Opst in advance of John Murphy. Peter Opst has played a tremendous game for Port Adelaide. There goes his kick. It's a beauty. Bit of jostling going on back here. Brent Adcock gets back there. Leal gets the run of the ball. Turns. He's only got to put it through and he does so. Oh, fantastic football by Port Adelaide. A bad mistake by Brent Adcock. Neil Nolte's though. This is the one that all Port Adelaide supporters will be waiting for. An early goal in the last quarter. And this could be the one that could lift them. Well, four goals the difference now. 10-13 to 7-6. Goal, four goals won the difference. Game is never over to that final siren. Wally Brett May. Brett Patman points out that Sturt have used 26 handballs to five for four Adelaide. There's a beautiful knock by Clarkson to Hicks. On to Schoff. A drive down to the goal square. Elloway and Martin there. The ball forced through for a behind. And we'll find Ron Elloway kicking the ball possibly out towards the eastern flank. 10-14 now to 7-6. Three minutes into the last quarter is Ron Elloway out towards the eastern flank. Clarkson gets the ball moving back towards the forward pocket. Enders being Leal. Leal gets the free kick for holding the man. Fister cuffs again. And still plenty of fight in both sides. Sturt have had plenty of opportunities to have been further in front and Port Adelaide no doubt will take advantage of this. They're finishing full of running. Down towards centre wing now. Bagshaw pulled in a one-hander. No? Out of bounds. Not paid, not paid. Out of not bounds. Paid. Must out have been bounds. over the line, I think. Bagshaw, who's played brilliantly and ranks high in the GW Cox calculations. Bob Phillips knock, goes to short. The ball held to him. Holding the ball, was the ball. And it goes against short on this occasion. 
that's a good decision. I, I felt that Short had plenty of ball to punch out, but he just made out that he couldn't punch it. Good I'll decision. I'll agree with you for a change. Haslam's kick is a deep one into the forward area. Peter Robs there, pulled down a good mark. Port Adelaide going towards the scoreboard end. In full flight. The wind favouring that end and Port Adelaide with every chance at the moment of bridging the gap. Bob's kick going in towards the front of goal but no out of bounds in the, left, in the right forward pocket for them. That's a better result than a behind, I feel, Ted. Uh, if it wasn't going to be a goal, it's better out of bounds right there in the forward pocket for them. Yes, a couple of quick goals to Port, and there's no telling which way this game will go. Clarkson and Phil, they fly high. Down it comes off hands. It's all Port Adelaide. Oh, umpire Duffer sees the free. You saw it yourself. And Bruce Jarrett of Sturt will take it. Pulled away, the Sturt player will not in possession. Bagshaw around the centre of the ground. Jarrett to take the kick from the scoreboard end. Nice looking kick out towards the plank it goes. It's all Port Adelaide. Oh, they ran into one another. Ebert ran straight into his teammate there and Clayton. Clayton goes to the ground. 26 is light. Light breaks away. He sees the light. Puts it over here into the pocket. Adcock comes through. Can't control the ball. Endersby racing after it like a tiger. Gathers it in. Oh, he's grabbed. Holding the cherry and doesn't just... give you much encouragement to go for the ball. Oh, no, I think it was a bit hard on that one. Ennisby did everything right. Once caught, tried to hand pass and eventually did so. He was caught holding the ball. Nyland gets the kick down towards the full forward area for Port Adelaide. Leal now throws it onto his left boot. And it's Jarrett once again. The stalwart for Sturt. Jarrett proving to be very cool in a crisis. This is about the fifth mark that he's taken around the goal square. Great player, Bruce Jarrett, no doubt about that. Plenty of courage. He will just take his time as the streamers settle down. He gets one to Bagshaw. Now, Ted, why was this? Was Jarrett injured? No, he just wanted to gain a few more yards. Well, they gave Eric a lot Green, of it. They've, they've, they've got 50 yards there. Bagshaw's got the free kick and spurt her out of trouble. That wasn't bad football because you know just how good Bagshaw is. When he gets a run up, there's 40 yards to be gone. Bagshaw once again going for the run. They're leerizing. They're leerizing. back. Lights the bumps. Takes the ball to the centre and drives out wide. Clark there. Football that I've just seen from Bagshaw is some of the best football I have ever seen. That was Noel Teasdale commenting with Wally May. You're bringing, you're seeing it on Channel Nine as the ball goes down to the forward area. Tilbrook first through now, under pressure, drives goalward. Chessel from behind, snaps off hands of Trevor Ops through for a point. Keith Jessel, who kicked eight goals in the second semi, hasn't kicked a major at this stage. He's kicked, what, four behinds now, Greg, is it? Three behinds, thank you. Greg Petman, our statistician. He hasn't been able to get back into the goal square. Martin hasn't been running around as much as he did uh, the first time that they met, and consequently, Chessel hasn't been able to grab those big ones one out in the goal square. You see a change, Wally? Yes, Cale's going to go back in the centre, I feel, and Ebert will come to centre-half forward. I see Clayton moving across to the centre-half forward going, position. Yes. But it's Ellaway who kicks the ball out towards the half-back line. Big pack forms. Ross uh, Haslam ferrets the ball out and drives out towards the wing. Terry Short there and Jeff Potter in close attendance. Short's kick over towards the centre of the ground. John Cale there, but he fumbles. He's well tackled. Shearman now brings the ball away. Down towards the forward pocket. Chessel there with Salmon. And Chessel... No, not... Yes, paid the mark. Paid, paid the mark. Keith Jessel from the left forward pocket on the boundary line, kicking towards the River Torrens goal. Goes for the big kick in towards the goal front. Off hands through for another point. 10 16 Sturt, 7 goals, 6 Port Adelaide. Keith Jessel's second mark pointed out by statistician Greg Petman. And there's still more changes. Kale's back in the centre, I feel. Peter Obst is at centre-half forward and Clayton's gone back to the forward pocket. 
coach Foss Williams have tried every combination you can think of and they still haven't been able to get in front. Clarkson plucked one out of the middle of the pack over Bob Cook. And uh, Twiggy Clarkson from the left half forward flank at the nine minute mark in this last quarter. The kick down towards the forward position. Ah, oh, Bubbles off behind the pack, pulled it in as uh, two uh, port, port players vied for the ball in the air. Trevor Ops the kick now, out towards half-back, Johnny Cale there, takes the mark. Strangely quiet and subdued Cale today. Up towards the centre. Oh, good mark taken by Russell Ebert there. And he kicks straight into Murray Ducker. Shearman got hold of the ball, goes for the short one towards Tilbrook. Tilbrook well sport by Teeley. Through came Cale. Teeley to Nyland is good football by Port. Yo there, and Yo takes his second mark for the day. He's at half forward flank at the moment. Down towards the forward area. Out comes Freeman, and Freeman marks on his chest. No more than 45 yards out from goal. Well, there's uh, 28 points the difference between these two sides at the 10 minute mark. And Eric Freeman has the ball 35 yards out from goal, a most important kick for Port Adelaide. It looks pretty good from here. The streamers go, the goal umpire says, one point only. It's one they needed dead badly. Well, they're all desperate uh, for both sides at the moment because any mistakes and any chinks in the armour will soon be found out in this last quarter. There's a stupid thing going on at the back of the goal squares there, Ted. Some of those... Um, cheer squad fellows or people out there throwing things at Bruce Jarrett and I just see him turn his face and wipe his eyes what a stupid thing to do at this stage of the game well Bruce doesn't seem to be particularly perturbed it's unfortunate that these things do take place Noel in the grand finals they're waiting for another football now by the looks of it somebody's apparently got that one and stuck it up their jumper and they're on the way home just the same, Blair. I, I think, you know, I don't mind supporters uh, yelling enthusiasm at their team, but to do these things that could harm players is utterly ridiculous. The same as we saw earlier in the quarter where uh, or something was thrown into, the, into the ground. Absolutely, Disgusting. Absolutely shocking. I hope the person that threw it feels proud of themselves. Jarrett is waiting for another ball. Whether we have one, I don't know. There is uh, not a football available at this particular stage. Umpire Hooky Neal is going down to try and get one. We've got plenty down at Woodville if they'd like one. We might have to get one from you too, because they can't get the one that's gone out under the time clock. The scoreboard reading Sturt 10, 16, Port Adelaide 7, 7. The policeman recovered it, and congratulations to the police and the goal umpire in question hands it back to Bruce Jarrett as play gets underway after a lengthy break and no doubt most of the players would have certainly appreciated that two or three minutes off. Stops the run of the game though and I don't Dreadful. think Port Adelaide would have appreciated it no. because they were in attack and going okay. Now this has given a chance for uh, players on all side, both sides to settle down. Couldn't agree more Ted. Bruce Jarrett's kick goes out towards the eastern boundary. In front Clarkson, couldn't mark it. Bagshaw got it clear and gave it to Shearman. Shearman elects to go for a bounce. Goes for the short pass now, looks for Schock. Out comes Obst. Two of the greatest footballers in Australia. Schock and Obst there, and Schock getting the kick down towards the forward area. Ron Elloway there also, and Ron Elloway would rank high in the GW Cox voting for his Sterling game at fullback once again for the third week in a row for Port Adelaide in this final series. Chessel and Salmon. Salmon got the kick away from that uh, throw in Chessel went well under the ball whether he got a nudge or not I, uh, I couldn't tell from here however on the oh, it's just inside the right half forward flank for Sturt and we see the players shading their eyes from the sun as they go for this knock yeah, Twiggy Clarkson to Chessel Chessel uh, to Rigney Rigney out wide, Martin there and Alloway in went Endersby the ball comes to ground, Endersby tries to get it clear but Trevor Ops there the hand pass to Haslam is good football by Port Adelaide. And a long kick up towards centre half forward. Bagshaw, no, it's going to be Nelson who takes the mark. Sandy Nelson, almost at the true centre half back position for Sturt now. Towards the River Torrens end, not a good kick, it finds Bruce Light. Light can't control it, umpire Ducker says that he did. Hicks was there doing battle with Light, but umpire Ducker ruled that uh, Light had it long enough and awarded the mark. 
Lights kick. Down towards centre half forward. Players fly. Down it comes. Haslam in there. Oh boy, has this fella got courage. Peter Ops in there. Off hands it goes to Chessel. Chessel can't control it. Bursting through quickly is Brian Schwarz. Schwarz clears it away for Sturt. Down towards centre half forward. Ops over runs it. It goes to the Wombat. Roger Rigney gets it on quickly to Brenton Miles. Miles sinks the boot. Down it goes. Elloway flies. It's Elloway all the way. Too for tall, Florida. too big, too strong, too everything. Noel Teasdale and Wally May, uh, guest panellists. Jeff Potter. Oh, boy. Is this fella any good? And what a game. You're watching it on Channel 9. Potter's Port kick Adelaide up towards the centre half forward. Sees uh, Bob's come through but couldn't handle. Bagshaw in there. Cleverly gets out of the pack. Goes for the short pass and finds Shearman. Shearman elects to play on to Chessel. I think they're making a mistake driving in high towards Martin at the forward area because Elloway's been too strong. Martin ferreted this one out. Shot goalwards but offline again. Yes, when Chessel's not there, there's nothing much to kick to. Clarkson's been quiet in the pocket and Elloway has completely shut out Martin at full forward, especially when they drive it in with the big long kick. He hasn't got much chance. As I said before, it's our pleasure to present a unicorn watch on behalf of G.W. Cox at the conclusion of this game. Many players in the running forward at the moment as Ron Elloway's kick goes out towards the half-back line. Bob Philp there. Didn't handle it long enough. The ball kept in play momentarily, but out of bounds now. Almost down to the left forward pocket for Sturt. And Bagshaw playing the Ruck Rover roll. One kick behind is out back there on the wing, waiting for that ball to be kicked back. Bobby Philp, a good knock down to Jeff Potter, who's been a great player for Port Adelaide today. Haslam and Short there. Adcock with a long clearing punch. Through comes Kale. He gets a long kick down towards the forward area. Off the hands of Freeman to Jarrett. Jarrett's hand pass covered about 25 yards to Adcock. Another long hand pass finds Short. Short goes for the kick out towards Brenton Miles, but out of bounds the result, and a throw in on the centre wing. And there's Miles has played well on a half forward flank. For mine, would rank pretty high in this GW Cox award. 27 is Salmon, 29 was Endersby. They're going through as Miles. Miles gets it down for Sturt, drives them down over the centre line, down towards half forward. But Erie comes through for Port Adelaide, clears back to the centre of the ground. Nyland out here doing battle with Clark. Clark leads in the race for the ball and bounces for him. He turns, bounces, runs right along the boundary line. Umpire Billy Neal right there. And a beautiful mark taken here by Johnny Tilbrook. He was legged everything else, but he stood his ground, took the mark. The Tower of Strength, Diamond Jim, as he's affectionately known at the Sturt Rooms. John Tilbrook of Sturt now. Right to the edge of the 10-yard square. It's into the goal square. Cleared away, but it's a goal. Miles. Miles again. Miles very, very quick then picked it up, but even though he was slung away, picked his second goal. Two goals from the half forward flank, 19 kicks, and for mine is creeping up on the good players like Bagshaw and Murphy for the GW Fox Award. Scott Adelaide will not pull up. Adelaide still one of the best for them. 11 17 Sturt, 7 7 Port Adelaide, and for mine, you can put your glasses down. Sturt have done it again. 17 minutes into the last term and the bounce of the ball sees Bob Clayton come for a big one. But Kevin Salmon it was who battled it clear. Bretton Adcock out there on his own as Port Adelaide desperately trying to get into the game have players on the ball. The kick out wide towards the flank and Miles, Dennis Erie in hot pursuit, put the ball too quick for them. Brent Miles on that half forward flank has been a particularly damaging player and plays the position to perfection. Once again, the tap down sees Bob Clayton get the kick up towards the half forward line for Port. Terry Short recovered well, runs into trouble now, but gets it to Adcock. He weaves his way through the players, and his kick, not a good one, and Johnny Cale accepts it. Johnny Cale now, with a long punt kick. Bagshaw in front of the pack, Ebert went high, off hands, Yo there, waited too long, a good tackle by Swars. Sees the ball bounce crazily. He gets clear, punches it clear in the direction of Adcock. Bagshaw there now. Back to Swars. Built off Richard on, Ted. Swars kick out wide. Thanks, player. It's all right, Ted. Noel. Noel, was it? I was too interested in the game. Thanks, chaps. You're welcome. The throw in on the centre wing at the 18-minute mark, and Chessel and Pritchard there, number 28. 
Peter Endersby with four goals from the forward pocket gets the kick down. Spears and shot there, but Bubbles Ops coming through from the back pocket, put the ball into attack for Port. Sandy Nelson come away from defence this time, punches it clear. Miles once again swoops in. Endersby now, and Sturt backing up well. Teely in front of Tilbrook, but Tilbrook high, and a good mark. This fellow flashes in and out of the play like a whirlwind at times. Sturt playing too confidently at the moment. Anderson. This is the first time in the game that I've seen Sturt bounce the ball on the run so much. And this to me is a sign of confidence. Well, they should have confidence now. Magnificent drop kick, and Ron Alloway gets on the end of it. No, Kevin Salmon it is who got on the end of it to take the mark. 11-17 to 7-7. Kevin Salmon, the great battler for Port Adelaide, gets it out towards half-back again. Players went high, Murphy there. Under pressure from uh, Pritchard, goes to the ground and the ball over the boundary line. 20 minutes has gone now, and many players in line for the GW Cops Award. This will be a hard vote. Right, Ted, we'll... Uh, Throw in, no, we won't get There's uh, still plenty of time to go. I'd like a bit of time to make up my mind. Peter Endersby to Clark. The ball driven to the forward area. Kevin Salmon came through again. Fortune favoured the Brave as well. Applied. Well tackled by Rickney. Bubbles Ops comes through. Then Rick Schopp dropping the ball in his shot. And Bubbles Ops will sit there. Trevor Bubbles Ops gets the ball up towards centre half back. Nelson from behind brought it to ground. Ran into Miles. They both go to ground. Aslam trapped it back, but his opponent short came in and drove out wide to the wing. Teeley and Spears there for Port. Rigney for Sturt. Schoff nipped in quickly. Hooks down towards the forward area. Martin there. Tilbrook running past. Oh, he nearly played on, but Tilbrook would have run into trouble as Dennis Erie anticipated cleverly. And Brian Martin, who hasn't scored a major yet, has he, Greg? Has the chance in this last quarter on his right kicking leg, Ted, to kick this one surely. He's made oh. a mess of this one, however. Offline for another behind, and 11 18 to Sturt isn't good kicking, as many misses have been from set shots. 7 7 Port Adelaide, 21 minutes of the game gone. And from Martin with four, four behinds from full forward, hasn't made the most of his limited opportunities. He hasn't had many chances, but definitely has kicked badly. Awaiting the kick out from Ron Elloway, just a reminder but about the big game tomorrow. Channel 9 play Channel 7 at Thebert Noble, commencing at 2.30. It'll be a thriller, it's for charity, we hope to see you down there. Play goes on. Murphy, thought he had it, but it's going the way Bobby of Clayton, Port Adelaide Bob and Bob Clayton. Clayton sinks the boot, down to the centre of the ground. Peter Ops flew high, couldn't control the ball. Schwarz in there. Haslam goes in, throws everything. Peter Yo, number nine, got his boot to it. Adcock comes out, but Peter Obst again. Made position. And Obst is almost in the centre of the ground. Shooting towards the scoreboard end. Goes for a little short one. And it came off. He found Nyland. Potter was there also. But he found Bruce Nyland, who's a natural left footer. All they've gained is about 10 yards. It's going offline, it hit the post! It hit the post, bad luck for Port Adelaide. The Sturt supporters breathe a sigh of relief. Bruce Nyland naturally dejected and disappointed. The scoreboard, Sturt, 11 goals, 18. Port Adelaide, 7 goals, 8. And the grand final for 1968 is well and truly over. And of course, next week we'll be here with a big one between Sturt and the winners of the big game in Melbourne today for the Championship of Australia. Kick from Jarrett out towards the eastern wing. Sees Clarkson out there, but well fisted away from him by Bob Clayton. This throw in sees Clarkson outnumbered, but the ball going in the direction of Rigney. Rigney's kick looking for Murphy in the centre of the ground. Nyland there, takes Murphy on, comes out with the ball. Down over half forward. Peter Robs once again gets in position, but doesn't hold the mark this time. Tries to battle clear. Does this time. Great work by the old fellow for Port Adelaide. But down to the forward area. Greg Leal was high, but Bagshaw with magic in his fingertips brings the ball away. Up to half back. Clark and Nyland. And a good mark by Bruce Nyland. <laughs> Nyland, all the kicks not all that good. And coming in is Swords. Brian Swords, strong at half back. 
Gets the ball up towards the half-forward line, where it's Teeley and Bayer, Tilbrook once again. Teeley run over the boundary line with the ball, and we'll have a throw-in on the centre wing. 24 minutes gone, and probably 8 or 9 minutes left to play in this game. Sturt 11-18, Port Adelaide 7 goals, 8. Players starting to show the strain now of the hard final oh. series. What Good a knock. beautiful knockout from Clarkson. Went to Rigney. Tilbrook trying to tap it on into the forward area. Does so. Throws it out. Uses his strength to keep it running. Doug Spears' pace kept him with him, however. His kick back up the uh, centre wing area and out of bounds in that position. Well, there have been many good players, and uh, Barry, I'm prepared to make a decision now. Back sure for mine for the GW Cox Unicorn Box. I had my mind made up ten minutes ago, Ted. Paul Bagshaw of Sturt, best on ground without any shadow of doubt. Clarkson's knocked down there. Sees Clark knock it away in the direction of Rigney. His hand pass puts Hicks into trouble. Gets it away to Miles, a great player on the flank for Sturt today, Miles. Held, gets the free kick. And there's the chappy with the free kick that I'd have given it to. The most constructive forward that Sturt have had all day for mine, Miles. Up to you, Noel. Well, uh, yeah, I think I'll go for Miles in the position that he's playing, getting 21, 21 kicks on the half forward plate must make him best on ground. There's Endersby breaking goalwards, kicks for goal but offline. Well, we've got a tight score here. We'll, well have to see Mr Cox and see what he's going to do about the Unicorn Watch Award. I'll tell you what Mr Cox will do. He's such a good sportsman that he will award two this week, I feel absolutely sure. And we'll give one to Brenton Miles and we'll give one to Paul Bagshaw. And I feel sure that Mr Cox will thoroughly go along with it because it's G.W. Cox, my jeweller. Well, there's a goal to start from a hand pass. Clarkson to Chessel and Chessel watches his first pager for the day and the 12th to start. 12 goals, 18-7-8, and the 1968 Premiership at this stage looks safely in the keeping of the Sturt Club. 20, uh, 26 minutes of play has gone by, and Port Adelaide have played brilliantly today, but I think the strain of the last two weeks has taken its toll finally on them. The bounce sees Clarkson get the knockout to Endersby. His kick out wide to the flank sees uh, Rigney come well up. Trainers on the ground still, and Port Adelaide in this up to their neck still. I prayed in vain, Ted. I'm, I, I think it's, uh, I'm pleased to say that it looks as though I've lost my kiss of death touch. Well, there's the throw in and we see uh, Ebert grab the ball from the tap down. Back sure at the back of the pack. A long hand pass out to Adcock. May put him in trouble, but he handles the ball cleanly. Down to the forward pocket where it's all Port Adelaide. Bubbles off there. And he might... Oops! Hello, the ankle, I think, went on bubbles then. But she staggered a bit. And that hand pass made the 39th hand pass to, for Sturt to 7 for Port Adelaide for the game. Ross Haslam being paid the mark there on the wing. And time ticks away. 27 minutes and Ross Haslam kick over half forward. Through comes Bob Clayton and he takes the mark. Plays on quickly, desperately trying to get Ford into attack. Eric Freeman there has the ball punched away from him. Jeffrey Potter and Greg Leal, the two Port Rovers there. Leal lines up, shoots goalwards and offline a point. Oh, gee, my eyes must be gone. I was going to call that one through for sure. Look through from here, Ted, to the, the position we're sitting. 7-9 point Adelaide. 12 goals, 18 stern. Yes, it's almost over. Big game for 68. Almost over. It's been a tremendous one. You've seen it on NWS Channel 9. Jarrett kicks out again from the scoreboard end. There goes the kick to the pocket once again. Salmon out there battling hard for Port Adelaide. Drives them into attack again, but it's going to be a wild kick. Out over the boundary line it goes, and will await the throw-in once again. 51 points to 90. Sturt have got the Premiership all sewn up. And our congratulations must go to Sturt and to Jack Oti. Our condolences to Port Adelaide and to Foss Williams. But my word, what a great game it's been. Play goes on. Port Adelaide never beaten, never giving up. And that's, that's the goal. Right through it goes. Eric Freeman snapped that one, Blair. It was a great effort, strong effort. Had a little look at the goals and just popped it right through. This is typical of the Port Adelaide dedication. Well, I don't think we can see any more dedicated sides than we've seen today. Both these clubs will put on now four epic grand finals for the benefit of the South Australian public. 12-18 Sturt, 8 goals, 9 Port Adelaide. 
The knockdown goes in the direction of Shearman. Out wide, the Tobbs there on his own. No rover in the pocket for Sturt, and Bubble Tobbs makes no mistake. Play for that ankle again, too. Goes for the short kick. Rigney's there behind uh, Ebert. Haslam's hand pass to Kale is good. Kale's stab pass in towards Nyland is good. Port Adelaide in for another goal by the looks of things as the kick from Nyland goes through and Port Adelaide live again. Nine goals, nine Port Adelaide at the 29 minute mark. Trailing Sturt, 12 goals, 18. Decide to be down over five goals and then come back with the enthusiasm and kick two goals in the mat in the same amount of minutes is this true um, compliments to Port Adelaide. Don't forget we've got some added time to go because that ball was out of bounds for two minutes. And then the Port and Strip don't want to forget this either. They're pulling up a little bit for mine and they can't pull up against a side like this. Yo got the hand pass away. Through come Nylon who's played brilliantly on the wing for Port Adelaide. Bagshaw to Swars. Once again out wide, trying to give Tilbrook the run of the ball, but to no avail, the ball goes out of bounds. To Miles' credit, Wally, you picked him as the GW Cox Award winner, and uh, Sturt have directed most of their attacks through John Tilbrook. Yeah, that's right, and I think uh, that why Miles, for mine, was a beautiful effort. Hasn't had the most of his uh, opportunity. Tilbrook again, with a chance to break goal with. Tealy there, harassing him all the way. Nev Tealy, Tilbrook. Haslam went in to try and kick off the ground and the wrestle of the Gladiators sees Murray Duck come in to bounce the ball once again. 30 minutes have gone in this final term. The siren must only be seconds away and Mr Cox, I'm sorry if we set you up for two watches but I know you're a great sportsman. G.W. Cox is a great jeweller and we've set two watches for you today. One to Bagshaw, the other one to Miles. This throw in now sees Clarkson opposed by Young Ebert. Ross Haslam bursts clear. His kick up towards half forward. Bagshaw's there and there's the siren. But it's uh, Vicky's in the bin for Sturt. They run out. Winners now. Sturt have won the 1968 grand final. 12 goals, 18, 90 points. For Port Adelaide, 9 goal line, 63 points.